Happy spring break, Eeks. Here is a layout, a possible layout, for Experiment 24 from Make Electronics, the Nice Dice. I have everything laid out here in Tinkercad. Um, I have some modifications, some necessary, some by choice, and I want to walk you through this whole circuit. Um, just a caveat, um, this is not posted as the, the Tinkercad file, so if you want to reproduce this, um, as I have done it, you have to, at minimum, take a screenshot and try to reproduce this. But it's best that you listen through, watch through, so you can see the color coding that I have done. Because it makes it a lot easier to trace through when you consider the entire schematic. And again, I have the schematic video posted, or the schematic uh, picture, uh, on the side right here, rather than one of the, the pictures of it. Because, again, I want to point out just the essentials. Um, and see, show you what sort of how I've routed it. Because again, it's not going to look like this. I've made some changes of taste and some necessary changes. So I'm going to start um, with our power supply. I have a 5 volt power supply, and I'm actually running this at a little higher current than our typical desktop power supplies. The the whole Tinkercad simulation software um, has it tries to mimic what real circuits and real layouts would do. I don't know the extent of the details that they try to mimic, such as if I make a, a connection really long, is that going to increase resistance? Or if I try to jump power rails from one to the other, is that also going to degrade the quality of the power supply, such as like when you really do this, you actually use diodes to do stuff instead of um, just jumper wires. And also, you know, the effectiveness of something like a power supply cap that's bridging the positive and negative. So, again, Tinkercad is trying to mimic how real circuits behave, but it's all based on mathematical assumptions, and there's always limitations to it. And if it's trying to mimic a circuit that behaves really quickly, it's probably going to give you some weird results, where if it's mimicking a circuit that behaves more slowly, your results are going to be a bit more realistic. Um, let's start the overview of the different components of this. Here is the clock, here is the counter, and here is the logic processing, and then the output for the, the, the LEDs mimicking a die, like you're throwing a six-sided die. I've added a couple things here that are not on the main schematic, and there are three three LEDs indicating how the counter is counting from 0 to 5. What we've wired the counter to do is to count up through six possibilities, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, in binary, and those binary numbers are being turned into um, four possible outputs, and they're being put into combinations. So the exposition here in the nice dice chapter, this is pretty awesome binary zero 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 is where we get the dice six binary zero one of course is one binary zero one zero or two is where we get dice two binary three we get dice three binary four one zero zero we get dice four and binary five we get one oh one uh dice five notice that every odd is actually going to engage the middle LED, um, which makes sense. Uh, it's, you only put that middle one in there when you can't arrange things evenly on the, the dice square. Um, so let's let's look at this. Let's go through let's go through backwards. Um, it's kind of how I started building the circuit. Well, I built the counter first, so I took the the counter that I had previously built, that was just the the four bit binary counter, took out some stuff. Um, and then chained off of some of the outputs of the chip to another board that had logic chips. And then I had, I just laid the LEDs out here. I didn't bother trying to put it into a, a breadboard layout because I can take some liberties not actually building this, just doing simulation. Um, and it may, made it easier to show for these purposes. So I did some color coding. So if I go back to this schematic, the LED outputs, we have four possible ones, and some get combined to create other numbers. Um, so outputs 1, 2, 3, and 4 
from the logic processing uh, part of the circuit. I have color coded output one. If we go down to the actual dice layout here, or a single die, um, one is the the two LEDs that are on either side, and so I've color coded that as pink. Two is the single LED in the middle. I've color coded that as brown. Three is the upper left and lower right diagonal, and so I've color coded that as gray. And four is the upper right and lower left, and I've color coded that as white. And I even kept the color coding as I went through each resistor to ground. The, the resistors, I chose 220 resistors for any two LED uh, series uh, branch. And then I chose a 470 for the, the middle single one. I wanted more resistance for the single one because that would try to mimic you know, what we'd really do, trying to decrease the brightness of this guy. Um, I used 470 and 220 because those are actual resistors you get off the shelf. I could have used like 200 and 400, but that's not typically a real resistor that you would use. So I still try to do some kind of real stuff with this. The, the next step, let me zoom back out a little so we can see the whole circuit. Okay, boop. Zoom in and let's not put a trace in the board. If I go up here, back to the schematic, the output of the counter, A, B, and C, I've also coded. A is binary digit 1, B is binary digit 2, and C is binary digit 3. And so binary digit 1, I have given this purple uh, LED, or purple wire. Binary digit 2, I've given blue. And binary digit 3, I have given yellow. These, this counter here is a little different from this counter. This is the 74HC393. It is a dual binary counter. And the reason why this one was chosen is the original intent for this circuit was to run two different uh, die to truly make this a dice circuit instead of a single die. The one available in Tinkercad is a single 74HC93. And the outputs of this are a little different. So this counter follows the same as these, where power is the upper right and ground is the lower left. This one, not the same. Power is right here. Ground is here. You actually have some pins that aren't even connected here. So here's a not connected one. I really like how in Tinkercad, if you hover your mouse over a particular pin, it tells you what the pin is. So clock input zero, I'm actually not even using because that only outputs to output bit zero. And these this is like an independent clock. So it's kind of like you have a one bit counter, which you can count up to one. Um, and you have a three bit counter. So output and the output bits don't go in order. So output bit one is here. Output bit two is down here. And then output bit three is up here. And this is where the clock input actually pulses this counter. So this could be used as a four bit counter, or it could be used as a three bit counter and a one bit counter. The reset for the entire thing uses both of these pins. You got reset one and reset two. And so the reset actually comes back to uh, the chip from over here. When the whole logic series gets to a certain point, it sends a signal, reset the counter, and then things start repeating. And so the reset routes to both of these, and that's where the signal comes to reset the chip. The input from the clock is coming from the output of the 555, which is also going to an LED to indicate at which rate the 555 is counting. And so every time the 555 goes from a high to a low, it's going to tell the clock to step up one, basically add one. And so the clock inputs here, binary digit one is um, here, is, is right here, because it's the one I've coded in purple. Binary digit two is going to be in this light blue color, and binary digit three is in yellow. And that's what goes over to here as A, B, and C. And again, I have these LEDs to actually indicate how well, what, what binary digit we're on. So essentially, what number 0 to 5 are we on corresponding to the entire sequence here? 
the other parts, so this was kind of a liberty I took with this. That was an addition that I added that this is, that's not here, uh, just so we can see it. This chip had to be rearranged because it's not the same as this chip. This capacitor is the capacitor that is right here, except I'm using 47 microfarads instead of 22, just because I wanted to slow it down a little bit more. And then the the resistors here, uh, the reason why we have this slowdown capacitor is that instead of a 1 meg resistor, which was on the original uh, counter circuit for the 4-bit the counter, um, this the intent is to run this really fast so that a person stopping the clock, or essentially killing power to the 555, you can see that push button here, will freeze the output of these logic chips in a particular configuration, essentially freezing the output of the die. And that's the, the randomness comes from the person pressing the button, not knowing at which point these are counting, because the intention is that they're going to count really, really fast, uh, faster than the eye can see. The purpose of this switch here, which is over here, is to actually slow down this thing so that this can be visible. So this is not a random circuit at all. It is truly a sequential circuit. The randomness just comes from the person killing power to the, the, the clock so that the counter stops counting. I've replaced a push button switch here with a slide switch so that I don't have to hold it down uh, when we are simulating it. So let's see how this behaves when I simulate this. Starting the simulation and notice how it's kind of fluc uh, fluctuating, it's flickering here. That's because my guess there's a whole bunch of random feedback things that's going to cause sort of feedback back into the 555, uh, fluctuations in the power here, so that this isn't necessarily properly grounded. Uh, that's what this is supposed to address a little bit of. Um, and again, I don't know how realistic these simulations are, what they're trying to mimic with reality, including all the, the, the nuances and deviations from perfection that reality will give. So when I turn this switch, it activates the 555, so now it starts counting at a certain rate. And you can see these numbers counting up. So I'm going to get to, there's 0, 1, 1, 0, which is 2, 1, 1, 3, 4, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 5, and back to 0. And we can see how those pair with the particular output numbers of the, of the die layout of these LEDs. So when I start with, let's, let's just go back to the beginning of the sequence, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 here, but 0 here. So this is ticking along exactly as expected. Um, I can slow this down a little more. Let's make this capacitor a little bit bigger. Let's go to 100 microfarads. And let's start the simulation. Let's turn on power here. And so start with 6, and we go to 1, and then we'll end up at 2, which is 1, 0 here. And then we end up at 3, which is 1, 1 in binary. 4, which is 1, 0, 0. 5, which is 1, 0, 1. And then we're back to 0, which is how we're routing the 6 here. Um, I'll point out, actually, let's start the simulation again. If I turn on that 555 and I turn off the slowing capacitor, notice that these all appear to be lit up. And same with here. What's happening is this is fluctuating very, very quickly. Um, and so what I will do is I am going to stop this power. And I get, I typically get everything in this six situation. Um, when I turn on the clock, things start counting fast again, and I turn it off and things are back to this sixth situation. So let's turn on the slowing capacitor and turn this on. Things are going to count normally. Actually, let me stop this. We'll speed it up back to the 47 microfarads. Start the simulation again. Turn on the 555. Slowing capacitor is on.
So things are counting. So if I stop this, everything kind of reverts to the six. And I think that might be with how I've routed power for these things. Um, but it could be for some other reasons too. So yeah, the 555 is actually not behaving in, a, in the appropriate way. And then it has to do with what the this chip is actually going to be outputting um, for this whole set of logic sequences. And so when I turn off the 555, what happens is no matter what number I've counted to, this reverts. Oh, actually, that stayed. So now I'm at 2. So let's see what happens. Okay, so that's staying. So that's behaving as expected when I'm running things slowly. Let's make them run fast. And we'll stop it. When things run fast, everything appears to run out and we have this, everything goes back to zero, which means it goes back to six. That's for some kind of further um, exploration. There is an interesting point that the author makes about the, where is it? He makes a point of talking about how this circuit actually loses a slowdown. And so I would say, check this out. This is going to give you some notions of the whole always on um, issue and whether or not things are going to be uh, truly random. That's an extension. What I really want everybody to have is this counts, or this pulses, this counts, and then this number is translated into a particular layout over here. So if you can get this going, it doesn't have to be a random number, but it has to count in sequence. Then you, you understand this and you know how to use Tinkercad. So my goal for you is something that works like this, um, where I can see that these will count in order. So you can use this. You can go back and forth in this video. You can take a screenshot of this layout and try to reproduce it. Um, and hopefully you will come up with something like this if you haven't already.